Okay, let's be honest. You have seen this game advertised. You'll have seen adverts before you've watched YouTube videos. It'll pop up at the side of websites. It even made its way into the background of one of my fucking videos. For a good chunk of you, the advert probably played as you clicked on this video. Game of Thrones, Winter is Coming, the officially licensed browser game is not something you can escape. The officially licensed browser game? Wow, if HBO have given it the thumbs up, then it must be good. Uh, the adverts did a really good job of making this look like every other generic strategy game ever, and the fact that it was being advertised in sidebars and pop-ups didn't give me much confidence in its quality. The most addictive game ever made. There are women here, click, click, woman, click. Every time I saw these ads, I'd think something along the lines of, ha, what kind of person would actually play this game? And then I remembered what my job is. Oh. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna play this game. I now have around five hours in this game, two and a half of which I streamed. And now that I've done that, I feel fairly confident in telling you that it fails in pretty much every possible way. From bigger things like gameplay to the simplest little things like remembering to put spaces in between the words. Let's start by going to their website, realgameofthrones.com. Not secure. Play the world first Game of Thrones game. But there are other Game of Thrones games. What? Stop. The webpage also has two scroll bars, one that scrolls and one that doesn't. It also describes the game as visually stunning while showing this picture of it. At this point, the site asks you to choose your hero, giving you five different options. Okay, so let's say I choose Arya. Your character will start with one special skill. More skills can be unlocked by gaining experience, assassin, mage, or warrior. Let's go with warrior. And then play solo or play online. I'm gonna go play solo. And then it takes you to the actual game and none of that had anything to do with the game whatsoever. This is, this is the real one. You don't start as any of those characters and you don't start as a mage, an assassin, or a warrior. Oh, just a, another quick reminder that HBO has officially licensed this. Also, while we're here, just a quick question. Why would you boast that the game is officially licensed? Like, yes, that is the minimum requirement. Well done, game. So I created an account using a throwaway email address and was ready to go. And the first thing I was confronted with was a completely black screen that occasionally made noises when I moused over it. I tried restarting it and stuff and it just didn't work, so eventually I had to download the desktop app. The officially licensed browser game. The officially licensed browser game. Browser game. Browser game. Browser game. Although it might not run in your browser though, so be careful. When the game actually starts working, you're greeted to an overview of a castle by Melisandre. I'm just gonna confidently pronounce all of these characters' names, even though I've, I've not watched the show since season one. Uh, she introduces you to the overview of your city which is one of the three main screens I actually managed to get to in the short time that I played the game before it became such a chore to play that continuing felt less appealing than rimming Trump. We're classy on this channel, I don't normally make Trump references, but when I do it's about putting my tongue in his anus. She also introduces you to the mechanics that you're going to have to deal with when you're interacting with this screen. You mainly use this screen to build and upgrade buildings that produce resources for you or convert resources that you already have into other resources. When you want to build or upgrade something or use one of your existing buildings to, for example, train troops, pressing one of the buttons that makes one of those things happen won't just make the thing happen but will start a timer until that thing happens. The first ones you experience will be 10 minutes but there are much longer ones too. There's also a queue system that prevents you from having too many timers on the go at the same time. Almost everything you have to do on the screen has one of these timers. Does gameplay that just consists of waiting for things to happen sound boring to you? Good, that means you're not insane. Fortunately, you get given a bunch of items that you can use to speed up these timers. Alternatively, you can pay to bypass the timers using diamonds, which are an in-game currency. You can also pay for more time skips using diamonds. But how do you get diamonds? Well, you can get them as rewards for completing parts of the game, or you can purchase them using another in-game currency called Black Diamonds. But how do you get Black Diamonds? With your fucking credit card. Holy fuck! They have a thousand dollar option! That was my live reaction from when I streamed this, and I still stand by it. I'm gonna be dotting a few live reaction clips throughout this video, they make it more fun. At this point playing the game, you'll also probably notice that there's an icon on the screen begging you to like the game on Facebook that you can't get rid of. In this screen, you'll also see a load of rebel camps around your castle. Taking them on in combat is a main part of the campaign, and it's the first thing you're gonna use your troops for. Here's how the combat works. You press attack, and then it tells you if you won. If you didn't win, you can always just train more troops using the timers. If you don't want to wait for the timers, you can always skip them with diamonds, and if you don't have any diamonds, then, well, you know exactly what you can do. But just in case that's not enough to get people to go for the microtransactions, the game will also just start begging you for money after half an hour. And if you click no, the game will just be like, yeah, okay, but are you sure? Here's, uh, here's a store anyway that you can only use real money for, just, just in case. 
just in case you misclicked. Oh my god, it normally costs 100 black diamonds, but now only costs 10? Well, like, I kind of want to get a feel for the game first before I pay for something like- Oh my god, no wait! It's only available for a limited time, I guess I need to buy it now before I've got time to think about it. Oh, just a, another quick reminder that HBO has officially licensed this. When you reopen the game, you'll be confronted with this shop that you can only spend real money in, and then when you close that shop, it will give you this shop that you can only spend real money in. At this point in the game, not only will you have noticed that it's garbage, but also that it's incompetently made garbage. Prompts appear on the screen for not anywhere near enough time to read them. Sometimes I don't even fucking stay at all. I will continue to advise you and help reclaim your cities, my lord. Cities is fucking spelled wrong! What the fuck? That's not how you spell cities! Attack a rank one rebel lead a dot dot oh, if only they could fit in the r if only there was some kind of alternative to putting dot 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 here they put an apostrophe before the s in the plural of the word gifts that's such a simple thing to not fuck up for most of the beginning the game will use characters from the show but it doesn't take long before they start introducing their own original characters into the game of thrones universe the devs made absolutely sure that these characters would fit into the world by calling them chris sheila and Kevin, three of the most Game of Thronesy names possible. I heard Joffrey was actually supposed to be called Kevin originally. He was going to be King Kevin, and Cersei was going to be Sheila. You have to pay to get Kevin, by the way. While you will have some interaction with these characters on the screen with all the timers in it, you'll see them most in the next area of the game you're introduced to, the Weirwood. Clicking on this tree takes you to this screen with loads of battles in it, where you where you battle people. I'm going to assume that's explained by something in the show, because to me, clicking a tree and it taking you to a battle doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The battles that take place within the Weirwood are probably one of the best parts of the game. I'd give them like a 2 out of 10? But for a game that appears to be trying to be a strategy game, they don't take a whole lot of strategy. You can get through the first 8 of these battles without pressing any buttons. Or moving the mouse. Or clicking. Literally just press battle and the AI will take care of it for you for the first 8. Unfortunately though, once you get to the ninth one, this strategy will no longer cut it, and you'll be defeated by a character called Egbert. This is when you'll start having to employ a new strategy. I did air quotes there in real life, I don't know why you couldn't see that. All the friendly characters like Chris, Sheila, and I assume Kevin, but I didn't buy him, have area of effect abilities that you can use on the battlefield. Right, I've not watched the show, is there any reason that Varus's ability is a, a massive, like, bomb from the sky? Because from, like, I thought he was like a eunuch, wasn't he? Is that, is that something he can do? His balls were taken away by magic, so no, he has magic balls powers? That's really good lore. The next strategy I employed was to wait for the cooldowns to charge, and then use the abilities as soon as they were ready, using the infinite amount of time you get to aim them to make sure they hit as many enemies as possible. This strategy worked for me up until the 40th battle. This battle seemed to be impossible to pass by just spamming the abilities, so for the sake of fairness I tried to pass it properly. I gave it loads of attempts trying to use the area of effect abilities at the optimal times, I only made Varus fire his balls at his enemies when it was exactly the right moment to do so, I tried adjusting my troops formations in the very limited ways you're allowed to do that, and it didn't help at all. Like, it wasn't just that I was still being defeated, I was still being defeated to the same extent as when I was just mashing buttons. It genuinely seems like this is a strategy game where employing strategy doesn't help. The only other way to improve your chances of winning are to upgrade your commanders and their abilities. The commanders are the characters like Sheila, Chris, and Kevin. Up until this point I'd been upgrading them as I went, because that seemed like the smart and logical thing to do. But by the time I'd reached the 40th battle there was more I had to do to progress. Mainly go back to the screen with the castle on it and level up loads of stuff by waiting for timers which were really annoying at this point. <laughs> There are a lot of artificial barriers of blockage in this game, and they're all just like timers. All the stuff in the Weirwood is also really incompetently made by the way. Often you'd be confronted by buttons that just didn't do anything when you push them. Voice lines for their original characters sounded fine, but voice lines for characters from the show had been really, really badly compressed and sounded like garbage. Only a fool would trust little finger. Very occasionally in a battle, after defeating all the enemies, you would just lose anyway? And then have to do it again, despite, despite fulfilling the win condition? We won! <laughs> Wait, what? Excuse me? Hang on, I'm confused, right? Because it looks like all the enemies are dead, and my my soldiers are cheering, like, yay, we won. But on the screen, it says defeat. Um, we lost! What the fuck? The buttons to level up your characters, instead of saying, like, level up or advance or something, they said advanced in the past tense. That's, that's not right. Sometimes the word equip would have an E on the end of it for no reason. You've unlocked a commander. 
Oh no, I have unlocked Commander. After subjecting yourself to this game for a little longer, you'll be asked by Melisandre to create or join an alliance, which is just a guild where you team up with other players. This is the part where they forgot to put spaces in between the words. The button you push to create an alliance says, Created alliance. That's not how you say that, game, but okay. When you're creating an alliance, you get to design a banner, give your alliance a name and a code. The code for my alliance is OEG if for some reason you want to join it. You also get to choose a language. For some reason, the game assumed I was going to want to play in simplified Chinese, despite the fact I'd been playing in English for a good hour. So I switched the language to English, pressed the Created Alliance button, and then the game decided it knew better and put the alliance in simplified Chinese. Anyway. Okay, so if anyone wants to actually- No! It's in Chinese! I specifically set it to English! Why is it in Chinese? No, I'm not- I'm not linking this to my Discord. They don't deserve such pain. Once you finish your build and alliance, you get taken to the third and final screen that I actually saw while playing this game, which is the world map. This allows you to raid AI settlements, interact with other players, and stuff like that. And while in many ways it's different from other elements of the game, in many more ways it's exactly the same. Things happen with long timers that you can use resources to skip, there's just random incompetence all over the place, random transfee, <laughs> and that's pretty much it. A lot of things about this game started to make sense when I found out the developers were based in China. A lot of the mistakes we see in this game probably wouldn't be there if the game was made by a team of native English speakers. And I think you'd be pretty hard pushed to find someone who grew up in a Western culture who'd think that Kevin was a good name for a Game of Thrones character. The creators of this game are called GT Arcade, which are a sub-branch of a company called Yuzu, and they specialize in making the boobs that you see at the side of websites. Why did HBO decide to officially license this? If I was HBO, I would consider the fact that this product was being marketed with my logo on it an embarrassment. This game seemed to be comprised of only elements I'd really seen in other places before, but at least most copycat games have the wit to actually copy something that's fucking good. Now, of course, it's totally possible that after the section that I played, it suddenly becomes an amazing game that isn't total shit. But even if that miracle did actually happen, what would be the point of hiding an amazing game behind five hours of garbage? The answer to that, of course, is that there isn't one, and the game just is garbage. But speaking of garbage, thanks for watching mine. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to be doing an edited down version of the stream, sort of a highlights type thing, and I'll be posting that to my second channel soon. So keep a lookout for that, and once I post it, I'll put a link to it here. But that's it for today, so goodbye. <laughs>